I greet all of you in the mat matchless name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Our God is so good, right? Yes? So tell your neighbor, our God is so good. Let's start with speaking to ourselves. Praise God. He's a wonderful God. He takes care about everything what we are in need. We do not have to be worried. Your worries will be quenched by the comfort and the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise God. So just keep loving God and keep moving along with Him because He's such a compassionate God. He likes to come along with us. He's not just finding sin in us, but He wants to have His love in us. That's why He comes here through us of our sin and righteousness. And He wants us of our judgment. So that he doesn't want you to go to hell. He's not pinpointing what we are in. But he's just pointing heaven. This is the best thing I can offer you. Amen. That's why Jesus came to die on the cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. Tell your neighbor. Jesus is for you. Jesus is for you. Tell your neighbor once again. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's continue with the teachings. Why a perfect God after the imperfect? What's the title? Why a perfect God after the imperfect? We are imperfect people. It's very important for us to know. What we are learning through this Bible study or the preaching. See, we worship it. A mightier God, a, a, a strong God, a greater God, a holy God. When you get involved with the sin, every, the Bible says that there is no one we can find as holy people. Everybody, the Bible says that every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. But this God who is full of glory is coming behind the people who lost the glory. That's the basic thing. He never went, went behind the angels. He just left them there for punishment. And even till today, he finds fault with his own holy angels who is standing in the presence of God. That's what Jesus, we are, when we talk about, but he is full of the compassion and love towards you. He wants you to miss hell and get lodged in heaven. He doesn't want you to miss heaven. But he wants you to miss the hell. He'll never be there. He's just coming behind all of us and telling, come on, come to heaven and be with me. That's why we keep on teaching about how we can take people from hell and bring to heaven. It needs a lot of perseverance. Each one of us should think about our own life and our own actions, our own anger, bitterness, our own shortcomings. But God is so patient. He's, he's showing such kind of a patience in our life. Every day he is giving grace in our life to overcome our shortcomings. If you say that you, are, you have no sin, the Bible says in 1 John that you are a liar. The moment though we worship God, a holy God in holiness and righteousness, but the Bible says exactly in it that if you say that you have not sinned, come on, you are a liar. That's what the Bible says. But with the same group of people, a holy God, a truthful God, a powerful God is the creator. He's coming behind and telling, come on, come to me, come to me. That's what we need to understand. The heart of God. This, today we are going to study about the characteristics of God. When we study the characteristics of God, what we are emphasizing here is that such a principle oriented, such a truth oriented, such a holiness oriented, 
such a righteous god who is our lawyer and who is going to be our judge never ever a lawyer who pleaded for your case cannot be a judge but here in the bible we see that jesus who is sitting at the right hand of the father is going to be the judge after you are gone from here the one who came behind you stop doing this don't do this come to me you will find rest the same one who is sitting on the throne room of judgment and will judge his pleading will finish there and his judgment will start that's why we are learning the word for transformation in our life we are looking at a god who is full of holiness and principles the kingdom of god is settled on principles on the basis of principles we break principles but god doesn't break principles he is faithful in keeping his word we are unfaithful in keeping his word but the same god who is faithful he comes to us till you die pleading with you to take you home today as you continue to read continue to study we will just keep going keep going studying about the attributes of god the this the previous teachings part 1 and part 2 is available on youtube you can visit our channel the father's house bahrain let's continue luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 26 luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 26 here two of the disciples who was with jesus christ for this three and a half years of teaching and fellowship provision everything what really happened is after jesus was crucified they thought there is no meaning in staying with this group anymore jesus is gone and we don't want to stay with this people because it can only bring trouble it's very important for us to understand the principle it is not the person when you come into that is the sign of a church the church is not a person tell your neighbor church is not a person the church is jesus christ tell your neighbor church is jesus christ it is not a person you know see i am standing here you think that i am the church i am the pastor but right now i am teaching you but the church is jesus i may go from here after some time but you will get another pastor here but it doesn't mean that he is the everything it is jesus christ this church belongs to jesus amen tell your neighbor our church belongs to jesus your cell group your language group you name anything your ministry it belongs to jesus it doesn't belong to you at all when you start tagging on your own name with your group your church then jesus will not be there at all you will have your own ideas and understanding and you will say that hey that man is not good you will find fault with all the people here but when you look at jesus inside the church you will not be able to find fault with one another it's very important for us to understand the principle here these two people were really their eyes were blind they could not understand this three and a half years of teaching by jesus christ he taught them from adam till his death during this three and a half years of a span of time but they never understood anything they were eating the bread every day they were having good clothes they were having everything all right they they have seen wonderful miraculous work happening but they could never understand what is a church you can be in a church for many years but you will never understand what the church is you can be in a cell group for years and years you can go to a group and be there and there and there but you must know what is a church here church is christ jesus they said now that man is gone 
but the group is there but you know you don't want to be there because it will only create trouble for us they were thinking about your own, their own ideas their own understanding they went from jerusalem and they went to emmaus jerusalem is the land of bread jerusalem is the land of joy jerusalem is the land of praise and worship jerusalem is the place where the king of kings is going to station and he is the and that is a place where the throne of the king of david the throne of of a promise is staying there that's a place where praise god let me tell you the power of the holy spirit of god is unleashed upon the people that's a place where god has chosen us the city of god hallelujah and these people what they did is they just said jesus is no more i am going back to my old place of curse the emmaus is representing the curse emmaus means it's a place of curse there is no teaching there is nothing it's a place of doom and darkness the moment you miss jesus christ let me tell you you will bring darkness in your life your face will be shown with that color of darkness your happiness will go away your heart will never bring the joy and the, that that reflection of jesus christ joy on your on your face you will be bombarded with confusion and trouble and 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 a lot of disappointments and failure comes sickness comes because you are not connected in Christ Jesus sometimes you miss you experience turbulence you experience misconnections we need to really put ourselves in Christ focus only on Christ nothing else you need to you need to be in the church you need to respect your pastor your leader your elder your co-brothers your whoever is just in fellowship with you that needs to go but it is Christ Jesus should be the center of our church this people they went away now to that person this two people jesus went back you think about you know such a loving god this two people they deserted christ and went back into a doom they were having everything worship praise reading bible everything was there but for some time they stopped it and they went back but jesus never waited ah let me see how far they will reach the moment they took a step Jesus also start walking with them telling them don't go don't go and after some time when Jesus was talking to them they start firing back i want to warn those who are rebelling in the presence of god even in your own personal decisions rebelling and questioning god i want to tell you Jesus will never always be with you like that this god who is coming behind you talking to you in your personal life sometimes most of the time what happens is our own personal decisions and our personal agendas and focus and and the number priorities will overrule the voice of Christ why because you have no heart to hear what Jesus wants to speak to you you are hurt your emotional problems your feelings your failures your wounds your pain everything you will bring in the presence of god through your mind will and emotion and you really overrule what the holy spirit wants to speak to you and you bombard people you fight with each other and you will say that this is what my god is going to do that's a time where we speak destruction over people over church over group over many things because you are not listening to Christ but here Christ comes to them and there because we have no time to read all this other you go back read at home chapter 24 of Luke from 13 to 26 it says and it says oh Jesus hallelujah praise God praise God and praise God glory to God Oh, it's a to the word that you want another is. Praise God, glory to God. Okay, there in this is. And verses 8, verse 18. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said to Jesus, Are you only a stranger in Jerusalem, and have not known the things which have occurred there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a man, a prophet mighty indeed, and word, before god and all the people oh jesus hallelujah 
and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to the judgment of death and have crucified him but we had trusted that he was the one who was about to redeem israel and besides all this today is the third day since these things were done yes and also some of our men astounded us having been early at the top and when they did not find his body they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive and some of those with us went to the tomb and found it even as the woman had said but they did not see him and jesus said to him look at this truly believers for three and a half years they said the whole thing of teaching but they never got the center of the teaching Jesus was talking to them that I am the Messiah. One of them confessed that you are the Christ, you are the Messiah. You are the savior, you are everything. And they said, we have left everything and we came behind you. Where we will shall go? But Jesus gave an opportunity that you can go, you can leave me and go. He said no, we cannot go anywhere. In you only there is eternal word. These people, one among them or one of them or two of them and what they said is they said about everything and we were waiting that israel will be redeemed but they were just thinking in their own time i want to tell you any vision any prophecy any word which you read don't understand in your own time understand in god's time amen that's very important you may be seeing a vision of angel or any vision concerning anybody but don't just interpret by yourself for the meaning you wait for christ to speak to you and enlighten your mind so that you shall be rooted and grounded in the prophecies in the visions and in the word they said about one thing that's what i just stop for a moment they said one thing he was the word before god they understood it he was a prophet they understood it he was a messiah they understood it but why are they leaving the church and going because they are in your heart is not enlightened they are understanding in their own methods and in their own understanding change the understanding before it becomes too late if you are able to see a vision if god is speaking to you don't interpret things in your own way interpret in the things interpret the dreams and visions and prophecies and the word in god's time wait for it when i see a dream when i see a vision sometimes it is very impossible to understand the things what you see i leave it there again god speaks the same thing i will pray about it and keep asking god what it is and god opens my understanding i have i've seen many of you in my dreams but i don't interpret i just wait for god to come in and tell me what that meaning is i can make my own interpretation when i see you but i wait for god to talk to me every meaning every dream every vision has a meaning but that not our meaning it is god's meaning i mean it's very important now the people who could not understand jesus went back and talking to them and calling them Hmm. and he said to them o oh, fools the bible says don't call your brother a fool you will be entitled for judgment but jesus plainly called them you are fool that is with a with a kind heart a loving heart jesus said you do not understand three and a half years i walked with you i told you day and night I explained you you have seen my transfiguration you have seen everything you are really a fool nothing in your brain whatever i told you it's not getting inside that's what jesus said and that oh fools and slow how to believe all things that the prophets spoke was it necessary for the christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory all this three and a half years of my ministry is what jesus said is was it not necessary for christ to come to earth 
take the form of a man and die in your place suffer all the sufferings and then crucify die and bury and then rise again and enter into the glory of god so that you will never miss me even my physical body is not here hallelujah you really need to understand you are not looking for a person here right now i am talking to you right now i am speaking the word you may be finding somebody else next week preaching or maybe i am going for a holiday you may find another person preaching here and you know that i am not here you will say that pastor is not here so today we are not going nobody will be noted who is preaching this week oh they a couple that is the main problem this three and a half years they were just focusing on the physical nature of jesus christ the appearance they were not looking at the word jesus spoke to them within few seconds said you really slow of heart you cannot believe it what i said i came in the purpose of god so that when i am caught in the glory of god i am present always everywhere when you come inside the church you will find me hallelujah tell your neighbor jesus is our savior he is the savior he is the savior he is the savior nobody else no demons no principality no power can challenge this he is the savior and he is the soon coming king and that's what we are going now the characteristic of god you just think about a god who is coming behind a backsliding person who is going to his own ways he's coming and telling come on go back you think about who our god is now today we are going to study continue the sixth point in relay, in, in 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 view of his characteristic the sixth point is oneness of god oneness it is oneness unity togetherness that is the triune godhead the triune godhead it's a very complicated subject a controversial subject all over the world if i preach about it tomorrow you will find an article about it whoever preached on triune God- godhead always it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a debate but it's very simple for those who are in christ for them it is a simple thing to understand let's read john chapter 14 verse 6 to 11 john chapter 14 verse 6 to 11 then he said to them jesus no john chapter 14 verse 6 to 11 jesus said unto him john chapter 14 verse 6 to 11 i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but except through me and if you had known me you would have known my father also and from now on you know him and you have seen him father is not there but son is telling if you have known him you have seen him the same father is there when jesus speaks tell if you have seen me you have seen my father and philip said to him lord show us the father and it is sufficient for us is this put that words back please so philip what he was thinking that jesus was keeping the father in his pocket show me show me show me normally the children comes to us show us what is it where is it see it is not that you don't have to search for the father you look for son then you will find the father in him amen he is a perfect father he is always with us he takes care that's why he went behind this two missing from the church and telling come on come inside don't go this way that's a fatherly heart and then verse 9 Jesus said to him have i been with you so long and yet you have not known me philip he who has seen me has seen the father so how can you say show us the father see it is very very clear to anybody who loves 
Jesus Christ and his word he says how can i show you the father as the father himself is here and the son Christ is here to understand father son relationship you really need to be in Christ these things cannot be explained in the physical term but it is the spiritual thing and verse 10 it says do you not believe that i am in the father how can you sure that you are in christ can you tell me how you know that you are in christ how you are telling you are in christ hmm. so i i put another doubt here jesus says do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? No. Verse 9. Verse 9. Jesus said to him, How I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me. Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father? So do you believe that you are in Christ? How many of you believe that you are in Christ? Only few? Only few? Only few? Not everybody believing? Yes! We believe we are in Christ. That's why we came together to worship God. Amen! So in the same way, when Jesus Christ was in the earth, He said, I am in the Father. Hello? He is the one who said about the trinitarian principle he said i am in the father if you have seen me you have seen my father that's why in the superlative degree or in the higher form of spirituality the born again say we are little jesus walking in the earth hallelujah because you are in christ Jesus said, I am in the Father. You are, you are telling you are in Christ. So you are the little Jesus who is walking in this earth. Because you carry the spirit of Christ. That's why you say, I am in Christ. Hallelujah. And so, son Jesus said, I am having the spirit of my Father in me. That's why I tell you, you are seeing my Father. That's why it is very important for us. All of you listen. They will take their chair. Don't give your chair to them. Let them find their chair. You look at me. The, 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 the great mystery behind this. Jesus said, His spirit is in me. My father is in me. And I am in him. We say, we are in Christ. And his spirit is in us. That's why we need to be very, very careful. When you deal with people outside and people inside. You can lose that respect, that honor, what God has for you. Your words, your actions, your reactions, you should control. It's very important. You must take care about your own personal uncontrollable areas. That's how you put yourself in Christ and show to the people that, yes, I bring out my Father in heaven. That's my Lord and my Savior. That's how the transformation takes place in our life. Father was a wrathful God. His wrath was always there upon the Israelites as well as the others. He was taking vengeance from, from the very beginning upon the people who forsake for, for who have forsaken God's authority over their life he dealt with the Midian Amalekites the Jebusites the all those ites you can read they are all ites only you name anything two words put it ites it will be ites all those people God took vengeance and he said it is not because of your righteousness because of their unrighteousness I am taking vengeance on them and here when he came when Jesus came he really changed the whole scenario 
he was showing compassion to everybody that's why those who are in christ you are vengeance your bitterness your anger your revenge everything must be transformed so that you can win souls you can bring them back to the father who is just waiting there to hold them and embrace them maybe they are sinners forget about they are continuously sinning you know what they have done last night you know what they have done last day when you met them never mind you still you need to open your heart the bowl of mercy and speak to them with love because this jesus is just behind anybody who goes away from him hallelujah that's a compassion that's the compassion of an evangelist that's the compassion of a pastor that's the compassion of a teacher that's the compassion of a prophet that's the compassion of an apostle that's the compassion of an am a missionary a believer we really need to understand who your god is don't just think on something and blast on people never do it show them your own friends who are working in your office may be very rebellious but show your bowel of compassion to them because right now in this season god the father is not that wrathful he is showing his mercy his grace and his love his affection to the one who is really really not in christ there will be a day i want to tell you something but do not never keep extending your own deeds and your own actions and work your own sinful life you need to put a put an end one day this lawyer who is coming behind you will be your church i have seen in the lives of people god has given grace and they have committed their life they have rolled their life in unholiness and filthiness god went behind them i have been i have gone behind people many people they rejected the gospel in the end they rebelled and god withdrew his love several people i prayed even people whom i have not even met because of the intercessory prayer god said i have taken the repentance from him because i sent my servants to them they never listened it is none of our plans and our our desires it's god's choice leave it in the hand of jesus and see that god is dealing with them but we cannot just play with them. we really need to station ourselves in christ show the bowl of mercy and compassion upon the people because that's what our god is now here jesus says i am in him and the words that i speak to you i do not speak on my own authority but the father who dwells in me does the work jesus christ he was not just he was not just a casual person who just carry on with his his own methods of work every day he has a plan and an agenda from the father he speaks to him and he does that that's why when we stand for the spiritual cause you really need to speak the word because god the father whatever he was talking to jesus christ he spoke the same thing to the people now when you speak to others when you stand in prayer when you are meeting with christ and talking to him really you need to speak the word what jesus spoke you really need to bring this word what is written here live and active in your mouth and speak and see that that works you are not working in your own agenda or your plan you are working based on the word of god if compassion to be shown show the compassion if you really need to speak the word and teach them take time to teach them and speak the word and leave them with the peace of jesus then you will see that results are coming back because that's what jesus did he said whatever my father spoke i spoke and whatever jesus said you speak that's a place where your prayer will be so powerful and active it says that i can do all things through christ who strengthens me Jesus became poor so that I will be made rich and 
he became sick so that i will be healed you declare that jesus is my healer my jehovah rapha my the lord that healed me you declare you find out the works of my hands shall be blessed you speak the words what god spoke you will see that it works but you speak any word what i said any story what i said any miracle what I, what god did through me it will not have any effect you speak the word and you will see you are representing God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit in this earth. Understand one thing. Understand one thing. Jesus said, the Father, Son and the Spirit of Him is already in, in Him. And now, I speak to you, I do not speak on my... Okay. But the Father who dwells in me does the work. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the sake of the works them believe that is we will just study up to that what jesus said is he is in the father and he is and the father is in him and the spirit of god the father is already in jesus amen that's what we need to understand simply about 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 the trinity it is nothing it is not a confusion creating problem we do not have three gods we have one god not three god in one we had one god only amen but we believe god the father son and the holy spirit hallelujah that is what is oneness that's how our god is he can just come god the father son and the holy spirit can come anywhere anytime he himself can jesus himself can come and talk to you holy spirit himself can come and talk to you god the father himself can come and talk to you but it's one god amen amen give jesus a clap offering now the seventh point seventh point is he is omnipresent he is omnipresent he is everywhere he is present but not omnibody you need to understand when he is omnipresent means not the omnibody not a physical body we are talking about he is present everywhere he 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 holds the whole earth first king chapter 8 verses verse 27 first king chapter 8 verse 27 but will god indeed dwell on the earth behold heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you how much less this temple which i have built solomon is praying a prayer he speaks about three heavens but will god indeed dwell on the earth behold heaven heaven is the area where you see the horizon like you know you can see to the limit this is first heaven the second heaven is above another area where the principalities powers demons they will they 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 stay in that place heaven above heaven is the place where our god reigns nobody has reached in their physical sense other than two people but god when you study this omni person god the, the omni person god not the omni body he contains the whole thing these three heavens and the galaxies if there is anywhere place time space anything is there matter is there he is there so he covers the whole universe and that god is coming behind you calling come think about who your god is when we think about jesus we think oh yeah he was he was a man see lot of confusion people create lot of religious fanatic people they just speak about prophet that this this we don't believe he's is not the son of god come on he is the son of god he is the messiah he is the king of kings and the lord of lords 
he is the soon coming king hallelujah give jesus a clap offering whether they believe it or not he is reigning over them he is reigning over every church every mosque every temple every place where even satan worshipers are there he is above them and he holds the whole future he doesn't need your approval anymore because he dictates and he does but now he comes to a people who are backslidden a person who is crying at the other and having no help a lady who is an outcast of the society that is a samaritan woman at which i spoke last week the previous week week before a person a a a, a, a demon possessed person who was crying at the gatherings he went behind them and telling them come he is not showing his title that i am jesus he is just going there as a common man a common person he is not telling that i am the super being let me tell you let us break all our pride all our knowledge pride all our physical pride all our understanding and come become a, become a, become a very humble person to to thank god that lord you have chosen me to read your word you are so powerful and compassionate the same time you are a wrathful god but lord your eyes never destroyed me your eyes had found compassion on me and you brought me to faith i thank you for that we need to crumble ourselves in the presence of god in terms of pride and our own understanding our own plans god has his plans and his plans prevail every time I want you to close your eyes. He is the omnipresent God. He is the omnipresent God. Hallelujah. He is united in the body. Father, Son and Holy Spirit have no disunity. They work perfectly in harmony. they go with one plan the two disciples they could not find the pastor they left the church let me tell you never ever take a decision like that if god has brought you to this church stay in the church be blessed because the church represents jesus you are understanding you just bury it there and stay there until jesus sets you free Hallelujah. Here he is the only present God. Jesus explained to Philip and he said, "Philip, you don't understand. I am here for this many years. I am in my father and he is in me. Whatever he speaks, I speak." come on from this day speak the word be ready in season and out of season grow in the strength and the grace of jesus christ so that his compassion is love his mercy come upon you bring everything under the power of the holy spirit of god let the power of christ rule your hearts and your mind remove any pride or any preoccupied understanding or mentality remove it and say that lord how big are you you are not even able to contain yourself in these levels of heaven above heaven and heavens above heaven who am i that i can challenge you i can question you who am i that i will walk in my own understanding i am sorry lord lord i will speak only what you will tell me i will wait for you were correction i will surrender myself i thank you that my sins are forgiven i thank you father that you have loved me so much that you gave your life on the cross i thank you father that you are so loving and compassionate 
you chose me to be a minister of the gospel you chose me as a believer in christ you have chosen me to set apart for yourself thank you father i thank you that you came behind me even no one time many times i have backslidden i went away i found problem in the church i have pro- i found problem between the believers and brothers i have found pastors walking away from the love of god i have seen people fallen in christ and that really deserted me and i went back but lord you came you brought me back into the place lord i i, I experienced disappointments i have experienced people who have ridiculed me i have experienced fruitless works i have experienced unrighteousness my heart is wounded my heart is paining most of the time lord the hurt the wounds i have received not from the world from the church within the church within my people that deserted my heart of your love but i thank you father you are such a loving father today again you are calling me back into your hold i am coming back those who are watching those who are listening take a decision into your heart tell the lord the lord i am coming back kneel down on your own area where you are just lift your hands to heaven and say the lord i am coming i am coming back i have been really persecuted with many things i lost the interest in you but i understood you are such a perfect god who comes with the imperfect i thank you lord receive me lord. thank you father father in the name of jesus i pray for those who are committing their life and touching your heart in the name of jesus those who have taken a decision to set them apart for your love and your affection father fill them with your grace and your compassion let your holiness prevail upon them let none to take them away from the heart of your father we thank you master use them bless your children in jesus precious name we pray amen amen god bless you god bless you praise god